Good day. My name is Teresa Fredericks from Growing Businesses Using Projects, bringing you yet another video, this time on MS Project, and we are resolving over-allocated resources manually. My intent with this and every video is to ensure that the ordinary person can understand what is being taught and applied. Our agenda, we're going to be looking at the use of schedule compression techniques in MS Project, the use of resource optimization techniques in MS Project, and we're going to be resolving resource allocations manually in MS Project. One of the things I wanted to say early is that overallocation might not always be a problem depending on the amount of overallocation. Severe overallocation, for example, a resource being assigned twice the work he could possibly accomplish in one week is always a problem. So what can you do? You can use schedule compression techniques, which include fast tracking, where activities or phases done in sequence are performed in parallel for at least a portion of their duration. I'll show you that when we get onto MS project, but it adds risk. Crashing, used to shorten the schedule duration for the least incremental cost by adding resources, but it adds cost. Apart from schedule compression techniques, there are resource optimization techniques. Here, activity start and finish data adjusted to balance demand for resources with available supply. And we're going to be looking at two, which is resource leveling and resource smoothing. So let's take a deeper dive into resource leveling. It is done where you have schedule activities to be performed to meet specified delivery dates. It can be used when you, to manage shared or critical resources, resources which are only available at certain times or in limited quantities. It can be used to keep selected resource usage as a, at a constant level during specific time periods of the project week, and also to rectify situations in which resources are over allocated such as when a resource has been assigned to two or more activities during the same time period. It can cause the original critical path to change, that is, sometimes conflict between resource allocation and activity duration. The last thing we're going to be looking at is resource smoothing. The ultimate goal is to finish the work by the deadline without causing resource demand to spike or fall. It might involve hiring new people to speed things up or changing the scope of the project. In resource smoothing, as opposed to resource leveling, the project's critical part is not changed and the completion date may not be delayed. In other words, activity may only be delayed within their free and total float. Resource smoothing may not be able to optimize all resources. It may not resolve all conflicts and can increase costs. So we are in the resource sheet view of MS Project, and we could quickly spot the over-allocated resources. John Smith, Adam Gray, and Equipment. They are all in red, and that is one way of identifying that they are over-allocated. If you ch check the indicator column, and you just click here, you will see this resource is over-allocated. So let's go to another view because we need to investigate. The resource sheet view just says these resources are, are overallocated. But before we can move, we need more information. So we're going to go to the Gantt chart view. The Gantt chart view shows what tasks are overallocated. All right, so you get that task one has an overallocation problem. This task has overallocated resources. Right click for options. So let us right click and go into Fix in Task Inspector. All right. Now the Task Inspector is telling us the issue may be that this person has 50% maximum allocation for this project. All right. And apparently is required to be to do 100%. So some of the actions being recommended increase duration to fit work. So that if he can only work 50%, we extend the duration so that he would work 50% over a longer period, and that would reduce the overallocation, reduce work to fit duration, 
which is to reduce from the amount that he's supposed to work to a lesser amount so that we reduce work to fit, fit the duration. So if he has, for instance, if he has three days and he can only work 50% of the time, which is four hours per day, so you reduce the work to 12, three, four by three, or add more people. And we're going to look at some of these options later on. So we have gone into the task usage issue. Um, so we are still investigating Adam Gray to find out. And we see him with task one. This view gives us the task and the resource. And he's 24 hours. And it is also showing over allocation. So when we go across, we realize that he is working 16 hours. Let Okay, let me just, one of the things we could do is move from five days to, to days because we want to see what is the actual situation over time. And we have gotten days now. And we realize on the 10th, he's working eight hours. On the 11th, he's working eight hours. And on the 12th, he's working eight hours. So that is the 24 hour against his name. But remember, he's only available to the project for four hours. So we are, now there is a way we can do an adjustment. We could do a manual adjustment. We can go in in this view and we could change his time because we know he's only available for hours. We can change his time. Now look, look for instance, you will realize the overallocation is still here. But if we put four hours here, because we know that is all that we have spoken to HR and this is nobody else is available, we have to do something about that. We can go four hours here because this task is a three-day task and we can go four hours here also. So we have now given him 16 hours and you realize the red person has moved and there is a note, this, assign, this, this assignment work has been edited. So this is one of the ways. Now when you change it here, you have to now look at the impact because he was supposed to work 24 hours, eight by three and now he's working 12. It means that we have to make sure we have adjusted it here but we, we have to do something else. We may have to, okay, HR is saying we cannot get additional staff. We may have to see, for instance, is there anyone in the group that can fill that gap? Because we have fixed this, but we haven't fixed the issue. The issue is this task needs 24 hours. Now, sticking with the adding day situation on task one, we can also ask some questions. Is it possible to reduce scope and therefore have the time reduced from the 24 to the 16 or from three days to one and a half days is that feasible and that makes means a management decision another thing you can ask could we bring on somebody to work overtime and that is going to add cost so somebody who is coming could probably take up additional four hours why people are allowed to work 12 hours a day so we're going to have to schedule it so that somebody can work an additional four hours before it's going to be overtime. So this task is going to get the 24, but there's not going to be an over allocation. But with everything you have to, to weigh the pros and the cons of every move. So let's go to task two and see what is the situation with task two. Task two, we have we are we are also having an overallocation problem. So one of the first things we could do is to go into the task information to see what exactly is the situation here. So we have Adam Gray 50%, which is what is his allocation, and John Smith 100. So why are we having a problem? So then we look across here and we can see there is a problem. Let me just bring this across. This is task two. We have Adam and John on it. But what we have is a finish to start with a lead. And because of that lead, it means that in this period, Monday and Tuesday, this person is working on, on task two and working on task three so that he is over allocated, which is John Smith. We have John Smith here and we have John Smith here. So let's go into the task usage view to see what is the situation. And I have changed the time scale to daily. When we look at John Smith, we realize he's working on task two on the 17th and he's working on task three on the 17th. 
So let's go back into the Ganshan view and see if we could resolve the situation. Let's look at it again. What we can do is change this relationship. All right, so right now we have task three with a finish to start with a two day lead. So before this one is finished, this one starts. So we can double click on class three and I want you to continue to look at the over allocation situation and we can bring in John. Okay, we are going into predecessor. So we are looking at task three. One of the things we could move is the lead. Minus is a lead, plus is a lag. So we move the lead and we click. And you realize what has happened. It has gone from starting before to starting after. So by just changing the lag and removing it, we have resolved this and this is no longer over allocated. Again, if we really want it to be, if this is on the critical part and we don't want to extend it, we can look at uh, overtimes where we can pay somebody or allocate somebody from the non-critical activities. So let's investigate the third case, which is task two. And we're going to see what is it? What is the situation? The resource here is we have equipment. We have John Smith and we know he has 100%. But we have equipment and that is 200%. So is there a problem? So we go back into the resource sheet. Anytime you are checking things, you go to the resource sheet. And equipment, there's only one piece of equipment. But yet on that particular task, we had allocated two pieces of equipment. And this is what had caused the over allocation. So what we can do is ask, is another piece of equipment available? In which case we would add an equipment, another piece of equipment to the resource sheet. All right, or we would recognize that we do not have two pieces of equipment, so we bring this down to one, and we would look at we bring, we bring this down to one. If we do that, you realize the over allocation has gone, but it has said click click to see how. The current adjust assignments are adjusted to accommodate the change in units because we have changed units from 200 to 1. We have to look at the impact. What is the impact of that? Now, remember we had a situation where um, I think it was this, okay, on this particular task, one of the things we could have done, now what we did, we changed the, we changed the lag, but we can do the same thing by bringing in a delay. There is, so we can click, insert a column, and the column we are looking for is a leveling delay. Leveling delay column. And we could have delayed, for instance, you see in the red here, we could have said we're going to delay, this is two days. We can said we're going to do a leveling delay of two days. And we click off, and you realize the over allocation has gone because this the situation where we had this thing starting before this other one ended has been resolved. So you have just seen some of the ways we can do over, we can resolve over allocation of resources. With some of the things we discussed, replacing over allocated resources with another resource, replacing the value in the units field. Okay, so that we now have more. Adding additional resources to the task so that both resources share the work. We discussed that. We, we also, we didn't discuss using the as late as possible constraints, but for now, we will be going to that. Accept the resource over allocation, which is one of the things I have said. If it is not significant, increase the number of project mandates. So, all oh, these are some of the things we can do. If you like my content, give it a thumbs up and share.